this is Andy Tube. In this video, I want to talk about the thread tension unit on the Singer model 99K. And this model is new to me. It's the first black or iron Singer that I've ever uh, worked on. So, I, uh, one of the first things I want to take a look at is the tension unit. And I've been working on it and kind of discovering the differences and how it works. So I thought I would share that with you. And uh, we're going to be taking it off, taking a close look at the parts, and uh, putting them back together and setting the tension and stuff. And uh, I'm going to do it a little bit different than I have some of my tension videos uh, in the past. First, let me take it off here, and we'll take a close look at it. There is, the, there is a set screw right here on the side that, that uh, screws in to this depressed area on this part of the unit. And that's what holds it in the machine. So I had loosened that already. It, it looks familiar to me. You know, when I when I pulled it out and looked at it, I said, yeah, I kind of know all about this. But it has some things that are different. Um, one of the things, if you saw my uh, threading video, was this um, check spring that has an open loop on one side. It's not uh, closed like on the other machines that I've done, the 301, 401, uh, Rocketeers, etc. And also it kind of checks down. Uh, you know, the threading goes down before it goes up to the take-up lever, which was different. And then this big old honking part here, I was like, wow, what, what is that? You know? <laughs> and there's a set screw back here too, and, and so there are some differences. Um, but look, here's here's one from a 301. This is um, from a one like the Machine Coco I did, if you saw that series. And look, they're, they're real similar. Does it look familiar? <laughs> but this one has a closed loop that checks up on the spring. See, see how it's a closed loop? And it's got this uh, thread guard thing going on here that this one has no thread guard. It just goes to the take up spring or check spring and the discs and then the tension indicator. There's no guard. And you know I can see the you can see the gear on this or what I call this this uh, tension stud and the spring back here and the, kind of the gear on the stud and this is uh, there's the pin tension releasing pin and this one has a pin but this is a lot different so what I did was I I, I took this apart and I put the parts on a scanner and I, I made a little slideshow here I'm going to show you and it's just like five seconds per picture but it's got a close-up uh, best I could do on the scanner and I've got the formal name that Singer called it and you can you know you can pause on the slide and take as long a look at it as you want but I wanted you to see the parts and see their names you don't have to memorize them there's no test maybe I should do it nah no test and then <laughs> um, but that way when when I'm when I'm putting it back together and taking it off and working on it you'll have a very good idea of what part I'm I'm talking about and what it looks like and what it's called okay so so check out the the slide here uh, while I dismantle this the rest of the way and then we'll meet back here
see if I can get this a little closer here, maybe. And then, let's take a look at this first part that, that fits into the casting on the machine here. It's, it's a solid uh, steel part that's, you know, laid out. And it's, it's rather uh, heavy. And I'd never seen anything like it. But what, what they call this the, uh, the thread take up spring regulator. Eee. And this little uh, set screw on the side of it, or, or screw on the side of it, is called the tension screw stud set screw. So the the idea of it being the tension uh, take up spring regulator uh, wor works like this. There's this part here that's cut out this recessed area right here. Um, see that kind of right that area right in there. And of course you're going to have the stud in here, but when you put the the uh, take up spring on the loop that comes out rests in that area and it works in that cut out area and that regulates how far down it will go and how far back and it also regulates the stroke of this uh, take up spring so that's why they they called it the spring regulator okay and the um, this is the tension screw stud so it's a stud like a post and they call it a screw I guess because of the threads here but on on like the 301 and the other machines where this just went in here and there was a set screw back in here or down from the top that held that this holds the a stud a sets the the tension screw stud in place so you you put it in there and you um, line it up with this horizontal at a certain place of that regulating area and then you tighten that screw and boom it goes in now if you if you put this in first and then put in the stud you can go in here if you have a real tiny screwdriver you can go in and tighten that screw in here just kind of like a set screw on, on um, like the three the 301 you know it just went in there was a, a set screw here and the 404 has that big long set screw that goes in here okay so you can you can do that I took it out because I was like what is that thing <laughs> okay so here's what what from playing around with it um, I decided that I like to put the the tension screw stud in before and I kind of found at the top of that cutout I put it in here and I make it so that the slash here the opening is horizontal and I put the top of that regulating area I'd say it may be like 11 o'clock let's try that okay you, you see it you see it over right there okay because that's where the spring is going to go so I gotta kind of set it like that so that's flat if when that's flat that's at about 11 o'clock or so then I've got to tighten up that screw back here right and this is the screw you, you would have to tighten from the nose or face of the machine. 
and it's it's tricky to tighten because it's right up against this shelf or ledge right there and your screwdriver really doesn't want to rotate and this you know this isn't a big screwdriver so I have to kind of put it into the side but anyway um, let's go ahead and and check that yeah it's tight so I'm going to put it right in the machine there. Okay. And you see that this is this is a horizontal and there's that regulated opening um, at about 11 o'clock. Okay. So then I got to tighten my set screw to keep the uh, spring regulator in the machine in that position and if I don't tighten it it's just going to be all over the place when I try and adjust tension so I get that leveled out and then I'll sneak in this screw on the side and uh, sure I got that level and tighten that up just tighten it snug so that I can do this work. Now I can start assembling the rest of the unit. And the first thing that's going to go on is this uh, take up spring. And like the other springs that I've done, and you may recognize this if you've seen any of my other tension videos, it's got a little tail in here. The last coil is bent in and and it leaves like what I call a little spring tail in there and that's going to slip in between what I call the gear and I slip it in to a slot that makes let me turn this a little bit so it, it makes the loop of the spring hang off at about three o'clock Okay, and I only knew that from from when I took it off before and pulled it out a little bit. That's where it fell. And then to set it, since there's on this other style, you may remember there's a stop on the uh, thread guide that the spring rests against. But this, it rests against the top edge of that regulator. So you've got to bend it back to put tension on it and you've got to tuck the side of the loop into that recessed regulation area and that's the stop now. So when it checks down and comes up, whoop, that's going to be the that's going to be the stop for it right there. See that? Okay, and the next thing is going to be our two tension discs, and these are not, uh, these are different from the discs on these that were, you know, flat on both sides. Um, well, the, the 301 wasn't, the 400s and 500s were. The 301s were what I call dished, and these are dished. I know one's convex and one's concave, and I don't know which is which. So that's how it looks. Okay, they're not spooned together because that would be too much, too tight on the thread, and they're not um, put together with the curved side out. They're put together with the curved side in. When my wife does hers, she thinks of it like a saucer, and the saucer bottoms go together. Okay. But anyway, that slides on to this tension stud now, and that's what's going to keep that uh, check spring pushed back into the regulating area. Ta-da! So it doesn't slip out. And then the next part that goes on... It, um, Oops, I forgot. Let me get the tension releasing pin here. Like the little nail, right? This one is not flanged on one end. 
and both ends seem to be rounded the same. It's one of them isn't flanged out. So I could have put this in from the back side on this. Before I put it in the machine, I could have slipped it in from the back. But let's see if I can slip it into the hole here and get it back in there okay. Because we can't forget that. When we lift the presser foot lever, it pushes that releasing pin to release the tension on the disc. Okay, so I got that in there. Now I can put the tension indicator or the minus plus right it's got the little bar here and that's not broken from the pin pushing on it a million times so it's still good we'll slide that on okay and then we have the tension uh, spring and that's what that's what a singer called it just the tension spring and some people call it the pyramids uh, spring and the beehive spring and uh, I've seen different information about whether this little half loop that creates the the bar there to, to go in between that's what keeps the spring from turning about whether that's supposed to be on the bottom or the top and honestly on all the machines that I've done quite a, f a few um, restorations of I've tried it both ways and I really don't see a difference so w w however you get it on there I think just get it on there okay then the next part does have to go on a certain way this is the the formal name is the tension indicator flange stop washer not the tension indicator, but the tension indicator flange, the part after this. And you see it's got a, a, um, it's got a, a tab that sticks up, or a pin, or a finger. I usually call it a finger. And that finger has to go up. You gotta, you gotta give it the finger. Okay? <laughs> and this one, the finger is curved. Some are straight, like on the 401, 403, 404, Rocketeers, um, several others. The finger is just a straight finger. This finger is uh, crooked a little bit. And you have to have it curved like that towards you. So it's kind of like the finger's pointing at you when you put it on there. So the finger is up and pointed at you. And, and the reason they call it, um, that they call it the, the tension indicator flange stop washer is this is the tension indicator flange. So it's like the number dial. And can you see all those little holes around the center? Right? And then inside, um, between the 0 and the 9 on the inside, there is a tab that sticks down there. And the finger is going to hit that. And the finger will act like a stop when you're turning it from left to right. The tab will go around and come up on the left and hit that uh, finger and stop turning. And when you turn it to the left, the tab will come around on the right and hit the finger and stop turning. Otherwise, it would just keep turning uh, forever and you would end up taking off the thumb nut. But that's not why they call it the stop washer. They call it the, the uh, stop washer, my understanding is, is because it stops the tension screw from going forward once you get the flange on there. So when you lift that, it pushes, the pin pushes against the tension indicator, which pushes against the spring. All right. 
and that's how it pushes back on the spring and re releases tension. Put it down and the spring now pushes on the disc and create tension. So anyway, when you put this on, you, you want the tab to be to the right of that finger. And remember the tab is like between the zero and the nine. So if you put it like with the one or two here up, you'll be okay. Because the, the finger's straight up and now the tab is like over here. So you've got it on the right side of the finger. Let's see if I can get in a little bit here. See how that springs in? Okay, and the last piece on this um, is going to be just like on the on the 301, a thumb nut or the tension regulating thumb nut. Whereas, like on the 401 and 404, this was a two piece a nut with a washer and a set screw. So I guess it was three piece, right? But this is the knurled. Um, Knurled meaning these little um, ridges so it's easier to grip and regulating because when you turn it that's what's going to regulate your pressure between uh, like zero and nine and the other part if you watch the side slow sh slide show is this tension regulator thumb nut engaging pin is that going to show up here? This is a new camera, by the way. Yep, it's my fourth camera. I have now broken three of these little $200 point-and-shoot cameras. <laughs> this is a more modern one. It's a Canon L360. And it was 199 at B&H Photo. Free shipping, no tax. And I picked this one out of some of their options that they presented to me because it was um, supposed to be shock resistance up to a 5 foot 8 inch drop. And since I usually drop them about 3 feet off the tripod and they break, I figured I might have a chance of this camera lasting more than 6 months to a year. But enough of that. Um, tension regulating thumb nut engaging pin and it's an engaging pin not because it's cute and friendly but because it goes in the little holes of the tension uh, indicator flange and when you tighten it and set the tension to where you want it's going to go in to one of those holes and then when it's in the hole and you turn the knob it's going to turn the flange with it and indicate to you what your attention is three or four or five or zero you know and I really like these type as I I, I really like this type of tension unit because it's so easy to adjust. So let's let's adjust it here. Okay. So I'm going to put it on with about the number two up, and I'm going to push that flange back against the spring a little bit, and then with the engaging pin towards the machine, I'm going to screw on the regulating thumb nut kind of up against that flange right and then oh maybe you heard that it, it popped into a hole let me take it out and then I'm gonna turn it just a little bit this way so it's like between holes in the flange there and I popped it in the one to the left and that's actually how you can adjust the tension on this uh, if you have too much or too left, you, you push the flange away and you turn left for less tension and right for more tension and then you pop it into one of the holes and you try it. So, 
uh, being the old guy I am and reading old manuals, they like you to use number 50 mercerized cotton. And I've salvaged it from some of the uh, restoral machines I buy. And I'm just going to put it on the spool and put that up. Run my thread through the tension unit. Get it back around and into that loop. Boom, boom, boom. Under there. And see, I don't know if you can see that. I'm actually going to go ahead and put it through the take up lever. And that's enough for me. Uh, some, some people go ahead and thread it all the way down to the needle and stuff, but I found you don't really need to do all that. But now I'm going to put the foot down and I'm going to turn this to zero, left to zero. So there shouldn't be any tension. And look, there's not. There is absolutely zero. When I pull on it, the thread's gliding through and it's not even making that uh, spring budge. It's not even making it wiggle. So that might be too loose, but let's see. Let's send it. Let's set the tension to two and try. Man, it's still barely. So I think that there's not enough tension the way I set it. Okay, so I'm going to push the dial, the, the flange in. I'm going to turn the dial maybe two or three of those little holes. Let the engaging pin engage again. There we go. I'm going to set it at zero and try again. Wow, it's still very... And my, and my foot's down. It's still like barely a drag on it. And let me turn it to two. Whoa, look at that check spring go. See that? So now I'm getting a pretty good drag. I got a lot of resistance on there. Let me go to three. Three and a half or four is where I usually like to set them to sew. Let me go just to three. Very firm. Four. Yep, that's strong. Six. Yep. Yeah, let's turn it all the way up. and Wow. It's almost enough to break the thread. So I like that. I, th I think when I've got zero, if I want to darn, you know, a free motion, it's hardly going to put any drag. Just, I mean, I can tell there's drag versus before. I, I The only drag was just the spool turning. Now I can actually feel a little drag. Turn it to one and the check spring starts to move. Two, I've got normal check spring operation. You know, then more tension, more tension, more tension. So that's where I would start it to begin with. And then I would do some test sewing and see. Now let, let's say that I got, um, I said, ah, it's a little bit too much tension. So I will push in on that flange and I'll turn the knob, maybe just enough to go one of those little holes to the left. Boom. And then I would try it. You know, it's, yeah, that's, oh, that is better. I had a little too much tension. Or if I said, wow, I, I've got, you know, it's still too light. I, I need more, more tension to balance my stitch. You push it in and you start turning it to a hole to the right. So if you hold the flange in and turn the knob left, every little hole setting is going to be lighter and lighter tension. If you push the flange away from that engaging pin, every little hole you turn to the right is going to be more and more and more tension. But look, it's so easy. There's no screw involved like, like with the 400 or the Rocketeers. It's just, ah, oh, boom, let me try that. Okay, oh, that's perfect. I, I really like that. Okay. So, that's how to assemble it and so forth. Um, um, 
let me uh, turn it a little bit and then I'll just show you quickly how to how to take it off of here uh, if you know so you can take it off and inspect it and clean it and put it back together and set it okay okay this looks like a pretty good angle and I, I have a little magnetic dish from the dollar store that I like to put the parts in especially that tension releasing pin and that stop washer and if you take off any of the little set screws when you do tension they can really run away on you so to disassemble this uh, unit well let me let me put the presser bar up and and take out my thread and save that for the next time hmm <laughs> And you don't need uh, a number 50 mercerized cotton. You know, you can set your tension with the thread that you will be using on your project. Right? That's probably the best. Um, because then you'll be setting the tension for the exact thread that you're using. But to, to um, disengage it here, I usually, you can leave the foot down or foot up, whatever you like. But you push back on that flange so that you're off of the engaging pin and then you just loosen, lefty loosen and take off the thumb nut. Now everything's just going to come off as far as those parts. There's the tension indicator flange. There's the tension indicator uh, flange stop washer with the little finger. There's the tension spring, pyramid spring, beehive spring. Here is the tension indicator with the minus and the plus. Here's the two tension discs. And I'm going to take the check spring out of the regulation area by pushing it down a little bit and then pulling it forward me, toward me. <laughs> Let me do that again. Okay, so I'm going to remove the tension um, take up spring by uh, pulling the loop down a little bit from the regulation stop and moving the spring towards me so it can go around that stop and now it's loose in there right remember when we put it on it was like three o'clock and then we push it over and into the regulation area so that it it gets in its uh, movement area here remember the little cutout Yep. Okay. So then when you've got it out of there and the tension's off of it, you just slide it right off. And now you can clean these parts with crud cutter or soap and water or alcohol or, you know, your favorite cleaner. But if you watched my other tension videos, you know I'm, I'm kind of OCD about tension because it's just so important. And people are like, oh, something's wrong with the tension. I better take it to the shop. Oh, no problem, lady. Um, you know, I do a clean and basic service for uh, 75 bucks. And if it needs more than that, then it's 100 bucks an hour. Oh, yeah, you got a tension problem. So, okay, here, fix it. And 10 minutes later, okay, it's all finished. Uh, I didn't have any extra parts, so it's only 75 bucks. What a deal. But now you can do it yourself, and you can do it. Look, look, we just we just did it, right? Okay. So, if you want to pull out the stud to clean it, you can go into the front with a little screwdriver, like maybe your tension screwdriver. Let me see if I can turn this. I don't know if you'll be able to see it in there. It's usually kind of kind of dark in there. Can you see that? There's the screw right there. 
this would be like most of the other uh, tension stud set screws that I've done except this one's this one's harder to get to <laughs> my screwdriver is actually a little bit big and I don't want to hurt the I don't want to hurt the screw. Did I get it? Oh, okay. I got it enough. I got it about a half turn loose. So if you loosen that, you can pull out the stud. And you can clean in here with your Q-tip and cleaning stuff. And you don't, you don't need to loosen the set screw over here and pull this uh, regulator out. You know, uh, as, as far as I can tell, this is a good setting for that regulator that 11 o'clock thing I told you but maybe I'm wrong so you know if you just want to take it apart and clean it and stuff you, you don't don't loosen the set screw and pull this out loosen the little set screw on the side of it that holds the tension stud like in my uh, my other tension series and then of course out fell the tension releasing pin so now you can clean all the parts right and this is what I mean, since there's no flange on that pin, you can put the pin in here, and then you can put it back in there, like that, and you can level that out horizontal, and you can tighten that screw, and then you can put everything back together, like I showed you. You can put this in so that it's at about three o'clock and then put it up right in the regulating area sorry my tension stud isn't tightened so it's going to turn on me oops but i just thought i'd do you a quick reminder then the two tension discs go on right and then what's next right the tension indicator let's put it here we'll go like that the tension indicator and then the tension spring with the half coil up or down see I think I put it down last time I'll put it up this time right I won't show any favorites and then I got to put my stop with the finger up and pointed at me up and curled right at me and then the tension indicator flange at about one or two so that I know my tab in there that's between zero and nine is to the right of that finger. I'll push that back in and then I'll put my regulating thumb nut on there and get it into one of those, get that engaging pin into a hole someplace come on guy there we go and then I'll thread it and pull and you know I'll start playing with it I may have to push that back and turn it to the right to a different hole engaging pin in a hole or two over and then uh, that's enough tension if it's too much I turn it to the left so tension's not a mystery. You, you can do this. Look, I've done it two or three times. Okay, sorry the video's so long, but you know I'm into tension. And this was a new, uh, some somewhat different one to me. You know, with this um, uh, regulator guy. That, that was kind of interesting. When I first pulled that out, I... I didn't know it was, I thought that was just part of the machine right there. I mean, part of the casting, you know. And I thought this screw over here on this side was the, t the stud screw. So when I, I loosened that and pulled it with the stud and this whole, oops, I didn't turn it far enough. This whole a regulator thing came out and I was like, man, what, what have I done? What is this? Look at that! Wee. Now I know people, for, pe you know that people that you have 
have these machines and own the 66s and 99s, you know, it's probably real normal to you. You're like, what the heck is he talking about? <laughs> but, oh look, you can see the, you can see the tension releasing lever in there. Can I zoom in there? I'm playing with my new camera here. Wow. Come on. Can you focus? If I give you something to focus on, will you focus? Nope. I zoomed too far. How about there? So do you see that lever in there is what pushes on the tension releasing pin that's sticking out the back of the stud and that pushes on the there we go and then that pushes on the the indicator which pushes on the spring which pushes on the stop and then releases the tension thanks for tuning in that's my tension video on cute the Singer Model 99K. I hope that you will come back and visit me again on AndyTube. Thank you. Take care.